here come the Broncos of Boise State back live here as we get you ready for kickoff. Where are the all orange tonight? Back home, the friendly confines. There's the Bronco girl. And their opponent, Mountain West Conference game, the conference opener on both sides. Here come the Lobos of New Mexico. And of course, the last time they were here on the blue turf, one of the biggest wins in program history. As the students and the fans here get ready for the start of this game, which feels like a very big one. Hi everybody, Dave Fleming with you here on Thursday night. We expect a really interesting game here tonight. We've got a tradition of that on Thursday night college football and ESPN, but it's not just great games, it's also great voices. So many of the great voices of college football on ESPN have come through Thursday night going back into the early years with Mike and Coach and Herbie, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, uh, Kirk Herbstreet was with us once again just a couple weeks ago as we got our season started. Ohio State at Indiana and we are thrilled tonight to welcome to that pantheon the great Brock Heward is with us. Brock, welcome to Thursday night. Good to be here. I don't know where I'm going to fit in that. Well, I, we had a spot in the middle for you, so who knows? Maybe by the end of the game, we we'll can say. sneak you in the uh, montage. We expect a really fascinating game for a lot of different reasons. New Mexico won the last time they were here. Meanwhile, for Boise State, it is hard to remember a week with the great tradition of this program where there was more pressure coming into a game than this week with this Broncos team. You hate to say it in week three, a must win, but it absolutely feels that way around town. When you've won 17 consecutive conference openers, there's enormous expectations that have been built by your success. This is also a team that has not collapsed many times like they did on the Palouse Saturday night in a triple overtime defeat. And while everybody remembers Texas A&M collapsing to UCLA, this was a 21-point lead by Boise State with 10 and a half minutes to go. It is their game, and they are going to beat Washington State. They're going to be ranked, and there's going to be a few more people in the seats. But instead, now the critical error by Cozart, the interception, the fumble, the inability to finish. And Brian Harson said that was really the command coming out of this game, the ability to make that tackle right there and to go and finish something that this program is so proud of has accomplished at such a high level for so many years and will absolutely have to do tonight to New Mexico. Yeah, this is a big part of the story. Can they bounce back from that loss with the short week and can they do it with a different quarterback? That's part of the story as well. For more on that, let's welcome in Laura Rutledge. Well, thanks, Dave. And yes, we'll see Boise State with a new starting quarterback. That is Montel Cozart making his first start ever for the Broncos. That's because Brett Rippon, who would be the usual starter, suffered a concussion in last week's game. They say he'll be ready to go by the time they see Virginia next week. But look for Rippon to have a role on the sideline as almost like a second coach to Cozart. And then on the New Mexico side of things, Lamar Jordan gets the start. It is his game for the in duration of it because we will not see backup to Vaca to Iodi. He suffered a concussion as well last week and they've called to Iodi the future of this program he has come in to spell Jordan at times when he struggled but tonight Dave Lamar will not be looking over his shoulder yeah so quarterback questions on both sides meanwhile for New Mexico coming off a tough loss themselves from last week Brock but a program that has taken leaps and bounds under Bob Davey yeah when Bob was wearing the headsets years yeah. ago he told everybody that he was going to get back into coaching more than likely an unconventional job where he was going to run the triple option but Bob's put his own spin on it they do it out of the shotgun it's based out of a zone system much more than what you've seen out of the academies and he's built a level of success that they've not seen in Albuquerque in some time Heck, they're looking for their third consecutive conference opening win and that would be a school record. Well here we go New Mexico has won the toss and the Lobos have elected to receive so they want to play offense first here tonight and right as we were ready to get started the uh, win there will be a little breeze I think whipping through the stadium here tonight blows the ball off the tee big game for different reasons on both sides. times in these last few years they have been explosive on kick return especially this guy number 19 Elijah Lilly who had nowhere to go and get stuffed just outside the 15 yard lines a good coverage from Boise State and now the New Mexico offense will take the field they get the ball first here and a very experienced quarterback Lamar Jordan who's a three time captain of this program the senior from Frisco Texas 
whom Bob Davey describes as not just the quarterback, but maybe the best running back on this team. And Lamar struggled a week ago. A couple interceptions, four carries for minus eight yards. There's no chance to come into this building tonight unless he uses his greatest asset, and that's his legs. 2,200 yards rushing in his career with the Lobos. He's seen a lot of wins in his 27 starts, and Bob has got to get him active in the run game, something they could not and did not do a week ago. Well, Brock's going to be teaching some football tonight, too, because this offense is different than uh, almost any other in college football. And an immediate keeper from the quarterback. That stumble ahead. And that's nice positive yardage on first down. Again, something they just could not do. And credit New Mexico State a week ago. They just blitzed their edge. People put them right in the face of Jordan, and it got him out of rhythm. It got this entire system out of rhythm. This is going to be a run first mentality over the course of four quarters and the quarterback as we know in these triple option has to be a factor in that run. Jordan this time gives it straight ahead with a very big hole Tyrone Owens across the 40 and finally tackled at the 45 yard line. Between the tackle run game that's what offensive coordinator Bob DeBessie said they have to do it has to be and has to start there with that element. It's different than the academies. And I love what Bob said to us last night. He said, really? We're the service academy of Albuquerque. And, and you don't see the chop blocks, the cut blocks. You don't see that like you see from the other academies. But you see the quick hitters just like that, the explosive plays, fundamental to the scheme. Nobody in the country had more explosive plays on the ground than New Mexico last year. This year, those have been lacking. Jordan got tripped up in the backfield. And he lost four yards on first down. Good play by Will Hepner, the sophomore linebacker. And these edge linebackers, so critical, they focus on their aspect of the game and theirs alone. It's very different against that triple option. Really enjoyed talking football with Brian Harson and his staff yesterday. And it's those players right outside the tackle box that are in that alley that have to be so disciplined with their eyes and feet. Second and long. With that option for Jordan, and he keeps it across midfield into Boise State territory. So that got the lost yardage and then some back on second down. And this is a very positive sign for Bob Davey on that sideline over there. 78% run. When they led the country with 350 yards a game and they shattered every school record offensively, Bob ran it, and then he ran it again. And he said, you know what? We may have gotten too cute the first couple weeks of the season. Wanted to be more of a passer, and Lamar spent his offseason really elevating that game. No, 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 no. Push comes to shove. Get back to the basics and who you are and what you built your program on. The give straight ahead, picking his way forward and leaning forward, trying to get there. That's Richard McCorley, who's more of the power back in this triple option system. And I think he's short by maybe a half a yard or so. And I think you go. I think so, too. The strength of your group is your offense. If you're going to win this game tonight, it is because you're going to run the ball time and again. You're going to control the clock. You're going to shorten the game and the number of possessions and limit how much your defense is on the field. This is the right call. So fourth and a yard. McCorley's going to get it again. He has the first down and more. He is tough to bring down to the 40-yard line. And the ball came out. I didn't hear a whistle. The open field tackle. That looks like a fumble. Kakoa Nawahine came up with the ball. Now Bob Davey is saying the ball was down. He's emphatically pointing to the blue turf, but we'll see. Really on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Mike DeFee, part of this distinguished Big 12 Mountain West crew. Of course, you might recognize Mike. He was the referee in the national championship game last year. Just had Ohio State, Oklahoma this last weekend. What do you think? Ah, that ball's moving. I think it's coming out. Yeah, that's the best defender for Boise State, Leighton Vander Esch. He's the. Now that angle, I, I thought from the other side, it looked like the ball was starting to move. Well, now we get to see Montel Cozart, who is the backup. Brett Rippon's not going to play the starter, two-time All-Mountain West quarterback. Cozart, a grad transfer, slings it out to Cedric Wilson, the big play guy on first down for a nice game inside the New Mexico 40. That's a good decision by everybody involved. 
And Cozart came here, and it's not often, and you brought this up yesterday, it's not often a grad transfer comes somewhere with an established two-time conference player of the year, as you see Brad Rippon. But he wanted to win. And he looked at the culture of this program and said, I got so beat down at Kansas, I want to experience winning football. And the Boise State coaches told Montel Cozart, hey, look, Rippon's our guy, but we're going to create some packages for you. We're going to get you on the field. That completion got right to the mark, and he gets the first down. Shad Monster, the junior from Mission Viejo, first down Broncos. And it was a year ago in this matchup that Brett had the time of his life. Five touchdown passes in the first half and a different mindset. I was curious how New Mexico would come out. And a year ago, they just blitz. It was blitz fest on every down, and they got gashed. And you're seeing a little different philosophy here, at least on the first two snaps, to keep a little ground and try to keep the plays in front of them. After the turnover, first down Broncos. Cozart. And a handoff straight ahead with a nice hole up the middle. That's some positive running yards for Robert Mahone, the redshirt freshman from Texas. Boise State, Brock is desperate to get the ground game going. Yeah, and they're desperate to create some movement at the point of attack, which is exactly what they do and what they've not done the first couple weeks. The offensive line taking a lot of heat around here and not much push that time. It'll be third down. Yeah, that's where that's where it is going to start for Cozart, and, and he's going to be a part of this run game. Not quite to the extent of Lamar on the other side, but I promise you, you're going to see play action pass. You're going to find easy completions to Cedric, and you're going to see some outside run, a whole lot more quarterback run than you ever would with Brett under center. I mean, literally, we're driving around town yesterday getting ready for this game, and the local sports radio station has got jingle songs about the struggles of the Broncos' offensive line. And that's what a big deal it's become here. Double tight ends on the left side. And it's a quarterback run. First down, Moore. Montel Cozart, touchdown. 28 yards. I said to you in our little preview, this would be a little different Boise, that it wouldn't be the power of football that you've gotten used to. Well, that was a lie. Because it was power football, it was just done with the quarterback. And that is the element that Coach Harson was really excited to see, why they invited Montel into this program. Because it's a dynamic that you've not seen around here. They've been good enough to win the numbers game with their linemen and their running backs. It helps that mathematics game when your quarterback can do that. And that power looked a whole lot better than it had the first two weeks. Extra point up and good. Kellen Moore and Ryan Finley and Brett Rippon and this guy's a little different isn't he Montel Cozart first drive after the turnover into the end zone great start for the Broncos they lead seven nothing there may be no better city in America to get out on the mountain bike and cruise around than Boise Idaho the state capital the Sawtooth Mountains just oh maybe 50 miles outside of town one of the most beautiful parts of this country Boise State off to a great start they forced the turnover and then their new starting quarterback because of the injury Montel Kosar into the end zone kick return for New Mexico a little more decisive this time out to the 22 from Elijah Lilly let's see now Jordan keeping it trying to get to that corner hey. Falls forward for a couple yards, maybe three, but well defended. DeAndre Pierce, who's turned into a good playmaker on defense. And one little detail there is, is you watch that option, and, and you can just have Georgia Tech and Air Force and Navy and those teams in mind. Anytime you're running as horizontal as Lamar has had to run early, watch what it does to the pitch relationship. It just flattens it out. There is just nowhere to pitch the ball the further you get to that extra defender, that 12th man on the sideline. Every play for New Mexico has been a running play. A lot of them have been successful ones, but the fumble, huge. Owens alone in the backfield. He gets it and gets taken down. No gain. Desmond Williams, nice tackle. And I love the conviction here. That's eight plays and eight runs, something New Mexico didn't do a week ago. They fumbled. Tyrone Owens did in his first series, and they got away from some of that run game. You cannot afford to do it. But you've also got to find a way to get a body on the closing nickel linebacker there, Desmond Williams. That's a firm tackle. That's head up. That's driving through. And that is finishing. 
Owens and Ramel Jordan alongside the quarterback Lamar Jordan who's going to throw the ball on third down he was going to instead he'll run for the first down and he does not go down easily you're not going to see a lot of sliding from number 13. Yes yesterday in a short week and they got right back on the field Sunday night Boise did not New Mexico did and in talking to Coach Davy I said who, who is it who's the guy that set the tone who was the most angry about that loss to their rival and there was no hesitation it was Lamar Jordan he wanted to get back out there he was benched in the second half he wanted to get back out there and use his athleticism exactly what you're seeing in this first quarter first down after the 15 yard punt they're taking a shot down the field it's incomplete this is an area of the field you like to take those shots but a better call defensively for Boise and it's been better execution here in the first quarter just look at the pursuit and anytime this triple option is running this lateral it squeezes that pitch relationship and it lets the long rangey athletes more team speed defensively for Boise than what New Mexico could present especially laterally They've won the opening series. Got double the yardage on those straight ahead option runs as opposed to the side to side pitch runs. This one a pitch run with some room, a cutback down to the 35 yard line for Ramel Jordan. You can see that pitch just a little bit earlier. I mean, it is just the littlest of details that make the difference. But instead of getting stretched all the way to the perimeter, he's able to pitch that ball and it allows his running back. Bob Davies guys to go north and south and always going to be more productive and you got a figure for coach Davey this is four down territory yes we got two plays to get three yards we got man to man to the bottom of the screen our Jordan straight ahead first down inside the 30 and the tackle at about the 27 yard line there is Richard McCorley back in the game for the first time since fumbling on the first possession a really nice block there by Ramel Jordan if you're going to run this system I really like what coach Davey had to say you've got to be unselfish and you can see Ramel coming right there up on the defensive end he's given 30 40 pounds but if this is going to be your style and your philosophy Everybody's got to give a little receivers got a block quarterbacks going to take some shots and those running backs in the backfield at times got to lead up on D lineman not quite first and goal they can get a first down before the end zone Jordan faked the pitch inside the 10 took a big hit we talked about all unselfishness that's part of playing quarterback in this system where you got to be willing to take some punishment that was our guy DeAndre Pierce again coming out of center field there that safety you do and, and you're going to take a beating and Lamar doesn't mind and I bet you as bad as last week felt and it's in the turnovers in a rivalry game and a loss to New Mexico State uh, he doesn't mind well taking in addition a little punishment tonight they threw the one pass on the first play of the drive after the 15 yard punt they have kept it on the ground since and they're inside the 10 trying to tie the game final seconds of the first quarter straight ahead run and another big hit down to the five yard line that's Rock McCorley on what is probably the final play of the first quarter and it is well, Boise State got that turnover and marched it in but I think Bob Davy, you see the look on his face I think he's excited about the way this one's going so far for New Mexico 20 plays 19 runs yeah I think so <laughs> I think you dial that one up that's the game plan for New Mexico. They won here two years ago, trying to pull off another big upset in 2017. End of quarter number one. Boise State with the seven nothing lead. And there is a lot of enthusiasm here in Boise. There's also some apprehension. There's a lot of blue. There always is. But this is a week where the pressure has been ratcheted up on the Broncos program after blowing a great chance for a road win in Pullman on Saturday now quick turnaround Thursday they have a seven nothing lead but first play of the second quarter is third and one from the five for New Mexico handoff and right to the mark I think depending on the spot that Richard McCorley got there but that was not a great spot so he may well be a half a yard short this could be an interesting call for the Lobos it's going to be a go go for it <laughs> they went for it at the 45 on the first drive of the game this is a very clear message from head coach to the rest of his team and all members of it in all three phases we are going to control the ball and we're going to run it and if we're going to go down in this building we're going to go down playing the game our way
just a few seconds into the second quarter a very big play and a keeper Jordan pitches touchdown how about that call on fourth down and one New Mexico into the end zone for the first time tonight and you just can't execute any better and the only reason you land the uppercut is because you were willing to go to the body you go to the body you go to the body you go to the body and you can just see the eyes and the linebackers and you get the one-on-one -on -one outside and there is nothing there that Van Der Esch can do no safety help no other pursuit for his teammates and his buddies perfectly timed perfectly executed yeah it's a great point because one-on-one -on -one really means two-on-one option football the extra point with the wind swirling around the wind could be a factor in the kick game that one is perfect down the middle both teams have solid kicking games and Bob Davies got to be pleased with the way this game is going his words to us yesterday where we got to play our game keep it on the ground run the ball that's what the Lobos are doing and they've tied the game at seven Beautiful night in Boise, Idaho. And the Broncos, both teams feeling like this is a big game for different reasons. But Boise State with dreams of another championship season. A terrible loss last week. And now, I think they know they got their hands full tonight with this triple option attack of the Lobos. New Mexico controlled the action in the first quarter. A turnover led to a touchdown. But now, the Lobos have tied the game. Jason Sanders has got a big leg into the end zone and the uh, Broncos are going to bring it out a kickoff return at a hard hit Cedric Wilson dropped shy of the 20 Montel Cozart starting for the first time for Boise State here tonight and he gives the ball not a lot of push up front that has been the issue for the Broncos there is nowhere to go for Alexander Madison and credit Cody Baker the junior Get out of my area, East Side Catholic up in Issaquah, Washington, his buddy Alex Hart, the middle linebacker there. Those two, you're exactly right. That's what the locals have been him and the Han about. Writing jingles on the radio is just that offensive line isn't creating the kind of movement they're used to in these parts. Well, Boise State in the first quarter, they only ran eight plays from scrimmage, which is kind of hard to believe. So you would not be shocked if the offense had a hard time finding a rhythm here. Plenty of time to throw and going deep intended for Wilson and the catch in stride inside the 30 the tackle inside the 25 that was pretty good coverage and just a perfect pass and a perfect pass is going to beat perfect coverage Elijah Lilly is on it and he's like man I saw this last year <laughs> I got beat for a couple touchdowns Cozart's greatest strength as a passer is that deep ball, and he lays it out there beautifully. And off straight ahead. They get the penalty yardage back. Ryan Wolpen with the five-yard run. He's an NFL guy. Cedric Wilson. Yeah, and Bo Boise's put out a lot of pros here over the years in every position group in their run of so much dominance. And these coaches were very quick to say, yeah, he's going to be our next guy. You're going to see him play on Sundays. He's, he's willing to block. He can catch anything. One-on-one you know, -on -one situations. There's no one in this conference that can guard him. Just his second year with the Broncos, decorated career at the junior college level. And off Wolfen cut it back to the right side, took a big hit, and has stopped well short of a first down. Stanley Barnwell with the tackle. And you just kind of feel it, don't you? We're talking about it just in this building. They're used to so much success. Brian Harson, Chris Peterson before him. But here, 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. This just feels like an awfully big third down. I'm with you. It, is, it has been a strange week around here. They'll throw a wide receiver screen. Why not get it to Wilson? And Wilson gets the first down inside the 15, down to the 11. And he took a big hit at the end of it. I think that speaks to the guys willing to do anything. Most receivers enjoy running go routes and posts. You want me to run a tunnel screen against a blitzing defense with five different guys? That's, that's like a punt return. You gotta have some guts to do it. And Wilson does. And those last five yards after the initial contact made the difference. Fourth down to first down. But not quite first and goal. They can get a first down at about the one yard line. The Broncos can on the move, trying to take the lead back. Until Cozart designed quarterback run and pushing his way to the five and inside the five. 
One thing we're going to see down here, and I think to protect the quarterback in the amount of contact, Bob Davy is the refs here just a little bit on the sideline. But I think one thing we will see, we're going to see some wildcat from different people other than just the quarterback. I think you're going to be alert to some tight ends, some wide receivers, some running backs, and a very similar concept to that, but trying to eliminate some of the hits on Montel as best they can. Well, a very rare under center snap looks like is coming on second and four. Under center with the play fake. Looking for the end zone. Wide open touchdown. That's the tight end, Jake Rowe. Del Coast, our first start for Boise State, and he is playing well. Eight play, 90 yard drive to take the lead back. It's got to be a little part of him that's thinking, I'm not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> it's kind of, and it's kind of fun <laughs> to have guys open, to score points. Eye discipline comes in lots of different varieties. It can come against a triple option team, it can come against a running quarterback, and sometimes it can come with the safety to just lose the sight of his tight end and his coverage. And Jake Rowe's done what he's done for five years in these parts, and that's finish and score touchdowns. Well, the Harry Potter fans don't need to wonder what's going on there. That's Boise State Quidditch. Yes, it is. They play their rivals from Salt Lake City coming up on September 30th. Getting ready for the big game. Yeah. What do you think? I think they're the defending champion, right? National champ. Did they, did they beat Harvard last year? Well, they made the Elite Eight Elite a couple eight. years ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah, don't oversell it, Brock. Line drive kick through the end zone for a touchback. 14-7 Broncos. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, Dave, interesting to watch here because the Boise State D-line thinks they figured out a signal coming from New Mexico center Blaze Fountain that signifies which side of the field the ball is going to. Obviously, if they know that, things could change here. Under three minutes to go. Play clock winding down third and long. Jordan pressured going the wrong way. And Jordan will throw it away. He takes a huge hit, and that's going to be a penalty. And that was just totally unnecessary from the D lineman Chase Atata, the sophomore. That will give New Mexico a first down. And hopefully Lamar Jordan is okay. That was vicious. Backup Colton Gerhardt, junior Arizona State transfer, getting ready on the sideline. That's scary. Targeting defense. Yeah. Number 93. 15 yard penalty. Wow. Automatic first down. And we'll see what we think, but that was the hit they're trying to get rid of. It is. There, there's a couple things going on here. Number one, the, the refs gathered together there and had a conversation to see if it was unsportsmanlike first. Remember, if it's called unsportsmanlike conduct, that cannot be cleared. You cannot take that away, even if you then go and change the targeting aspect. So they, you're not talking about a defenseless player, you are looking to see that contact there by Hatata. If you care about football, if you care about the future of this game, you can't complain about that penalty. No. And I don't even think defensive players should. I think even a defensive player realizes, you know what, that quarterback's outside the pocket. Keep your eyes up. Keep your head up and change your target zone. There is no reason there to, to, to hit with the crown of your helmet into the chin of that quarterback. Keep your head up. Drive through his chest, right? As I said, Jake Browning last week, Rippon take huge shots, but it's changing that strike zone. Well, Colton Gerhardt, the junior, who doesn't have a lot of playing experience, who is a good runner. In fact, he came to New Mexico with the idea that he could well be a running back. And Colton Gerhardt, Toby's brother, Toby Gerhardt, the great uh, Stanford running back who went on to play in the NFL, who I believe is here tonight watching his brother. And I don't think he was hoping that little bro was going to get into this game. It means that Lamar Jordan is out. Yeah. But Colton is capable. You see Bob over there, and this is one of the challenges with now a third string quarterback that's finding himself just the tempo and the game mechanics to pick up the pace. A handoff. And the run on first down close to midfield by McCorley. 
Only one timeout for the Lobos. They do have a kicker with a very strong leg, so they can get into field goal range here. And Jason Sander, his, Sanders has made his last 12 kicks. He's got arguably the strongest field goal kicking leg in the country. So we'll see. They don't have to go much farther to be in his range. That throw is on target. First down to New Mexico. Well delivered by Colton Gerhardt. Uh, there is Jason Sanders. Patrick Reed made the catch. He could be the next quarterback up for New Mexico. They don't have any more quarterbacks after Gerhardt. He's back to pass. Now scrambling with a lot of open blue turf. Changed hands. Lunges forward. And he got stopped short. So that keeps the clock winding. That is big. Only the one timeout. So the Lobos have to hustle. Nice drive here engineered by the backup after the targeting and the starter knocked out of the game probably still in range But they could use some yardage to make it an easier kick throwing with pressure and you got to get rid of it Gerhardt does get rid of it throws it away and the clock doesn't stop until it lands out of bounds So six seconds left now. What do you do well with a with the happy trigger finger of the clock here? <laughs> Boise you take no risk. Yeah, you could say well you could throw a little quick out maybe a little hitch You got a timeout. No no, you don't take any risk when your kicker's got the leg to do this. That five seconds plus then the delay of game penalty, that makes this a much different proposition, even for a guy whose career long is 52, and he's got the leg for more than that. This would be a career long for Jason Sanders. 53-yard try. One of the best kickers in college football. Six seconds to go until halftime. The snap was a little bit high, and that one really just had no chance whatsoever. And that will be the final play of the first half. Maybe the snap through the timing off. New Mexico can't get points, and the Broncos will get the ball to start the second half. Well, a turnover was big for New Mexico. Otherwise, I think they have to be pleased with the way this one went. 14-7, Boise State, Adnan, Joey, Jesse in studio. Take it away. Getting ready to start the second half here in Boise, Montel Cozart and the Broncos with a touchdown lead in their conference opener. Same deal for the Lobos of New Mexico. 14 to 7 the score as we start the third quarter. Dave Fleming, Brock Heward back with you here from Boise. Broncos lead in a lot of ways. New Mexico controlled the first half. Whenever a coach repeats himself, I typically write that down on my board, and we got to be us. We got to get back to who we are. The number of times Bob Davies said to us last night, we got to stop being so cute. We've been throwing the ball way too much. Well, that first half, 87% run, and you can see it. They controlled the time of possession, two to one. The number of plays, two to one. And outside of an early fumble, a missed field goal, this game would be even closer. And that clock management, end of half, end of game is so crucial. It might have been a 10-yard swing there. If you run a play, get five yards. Instead, you go five yards backwards. Boise State's going to get the ball after the touchback. Moments ago, Laura Rutledge talked with the Boise State head coach. Thanks, Coach. What are your thoughts on Martel Cozart in his first start here? Well, I think he's playing well. We've only had 19 plays on offense, so we're fresh. We got the chance to get the ball right here, and I think he's operating well. He's throwing the ball well. He's ran the ball well. So, so far, so good. All right, thanks, Laura. Thanks to Brian Harson as well. He mentioned the, the low plate count total. How about this contrast? Indiana, Ohio State, we had them week one on Thursday night. 90 plays total in the first half. This game, 58. I mean, just a totally different style game and really dictated by New Mexico. First play here of the second half is a handoff to Ryan Wolpen as the Broncos continue to try to establish that ground game. And that's now eight carries for 26 yards. Just about three yards a carry by anybody not named the quarterback. And that's just not winning football. That's not Brian Harson and Boise State football. You replace three all-conference linemen. Yes, Brett Rippon is out with the concussion, and he loves to throw the football, but it all starts. They are at their best when you can own the line of scrimmage, and that has not been the case in these 20 snaps. Cozart on second and eight, pitches it. C.T. Thomas, the true freshman with a lot of speed, but you can't get to the speed if there's nowhere to go. That was really well played by the nickel linebacker. He's about five foot eight and 180 pounds, Jake Rothschiller. Number 28, and he plays it perfectly. That outside arm, those little details are so crucial when you're that size. He forces the contact. He keeps his outside arm free, so that leverage is there at the point of attack. 
And the rest of the Lobos come clean up the tackle in the third and long situation to begin the second half. And we don't want to oversell things, but for New Mexico, a chance very early in the second half, down by a touchdown to get the ball back. Cozart, some pressure comes. He throws short and the great open field tackle. It will be fourth down. That was just a nice play by Stanley Barnwell. Too predictable. And it really starts on that first down run. Coach Harson can say, we're fresh, we feel good. Cozart's now 9 of 10, but it's just simply too predictable. When you do not have early down success, you make life difficult on you, whether you're an experienced quarterback or, or one making your first start in this uniform. So Chris Davis back to return. The right-footed punter, Velasquez. This one not a great kick. It's going to bounce on the blue turf, and it takes a Boise State bounce inside the 30. It'll roll to the 26-yard line. Well, this was a huge play in the first half, but right near the end of the half, a targeting penalty called against Chase Hatata, sophomore defensive lineman. They looked at it. We looked at it. Clear targeting. Defenseless player, quarterback. Forcible contact to the head and neck area. That is a no-no. Yeah, Lamar Jordan knocked out of the game. For more on that story, let's go down to Laura. Yeah, Dave, the New Mexico athletic trainers tell me Lamar Jordan is still being put through concussion tests in the locker room. His parents are there with him. They said he's in good spirits. He's been trying to smile as much as possible and actually wants to be back out here with his team. They, of course, will make sure he's good to go to come back out in street clothes. And just so you know, if something were to happen to Gerhard, Derek Martinez would be the backup to him. He's never taken a snap for this New Mexico team. Before. And somewhere, Derek Martinez family's like, what did they just say? And, uh, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you, underneath those shoulder pads, Derek Martinez's heart is beating faster than he ever imagined it would. Because now you've got your third quarterback in. And credit to Gerhardt to come right in and just own that spot, own that possession. I don't anticipate much changing with the game plan. I mean, uh, Colton Gerhardt looked good on that first drive. Colton Gerhardt going to throw, and that's a nice delivery outside the 40 to the 41 yard line for a New Mexico first down. And who knows, maybe with Colton Gerhardt in the backfield, maybe we might see the air attack a little more. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> not, not while we're in a one possession game here and playing it exactly the way that that guy who's coached a lot of football, who's turned this program around, who's gone to back to back bowls, who's won a 12 of his last 17 conference games never happened before for these Lobos out of Albuquerque. No, I think they'll stick to playing. 39 rushes, six pass attempts, handoff on first down. Owens trying to get to that corner, used the stiff arm and did get some yardage before he's pushed out of bounds. That will be a challenge. Gerhardt, pitch play, and not much room for Daryl Chestnut. Out of bounds, well short of the first down. Third down coming up as New Mexico Darryl nears Jackson midfield. Vander Esch and Pierce have been everywhere. Everywhere, those two. I mean, just, you want your D-line. Brian Harson says, you stop this deep, this scheme, you have to have the first component and the right fit is on that D-line. But DeAndre with double-digit tackles in that first half. Esch, Vander Esch right behind him. Those two have been chasing all game for a defense that's been on the field an awful lot tonight. Well, if it was four down territory at your own 25, maybe it's four down territory here near midfield. Play clock winding down. They got to get the ball snapped. And do they? I don't think so. But no flag was thrown. It didn't look like to me the keeper stopped short. A gain of just a yard. It's fourth and three. And that distance could dictate a different decision. We'll see. Yeah, now do you get to the point where you actually trust your defense, who's gotten back to back stops? You've got excellent special teams. The punt team's not coming out there. Now you may be getting to a point, right, where ultimately your execution is going to dictate the call, and I think yeah. this is the right call. Yeah, and they, they changed their mind. Now the punt team does come on the field. Try to flip the field through your field position. You've tried to do it with your aggressiveness early, but your defense, they're rising to the occasion tonight. They're tackling phenomenally well. They get the play snapped. Well, Jorquez trying to pin Boise State and the ball will bounce inside the five and the coverage man just didn't know where the ball was so it kicks into the end zone that was a chance and the punters a little frustrated but I think Boise State might be getting a little frustrated themselves they got their hands full tonight here in the capital of the state of Idaho Broncos get the ball back up by seven
still got the arm to get it down to the blue turf. This is a designed quarterback run. So that's part of what you're talking about. You might have to risk your backup a little more here. Second down. The idea of the starter, Brett Rippon, is out. With a, we're saying an injury. Basically, he had a concussion from last week, so he's not playing tonight. The other nine running backs have combined for 22 yards rushing. Total. That's two and a half yards to carry with a long rush of six yards. You're not winning in conventional run games, so get to what Cozart is capable of running. Second and six here after that four-yard gain. Wilson did come out. We saw that on the sideline. That, that's the conventional run game that has gone nowhere. Yeah, nowhere. You're, just, you're just not winning blocks. And, and pick a guy. You can pick a spot, and that time it's your tight end. Danon's 87. Right, your other young tight end, Pistoni, 47. Those guys are just not winning and sustaining blocks. And now you're in a predictable passing situation for the fourth straight time here to begin the second half. Third and five. Broncos fans, you can feel the nervous energy here. Starting to get worried about this one. Cozart pressured, flushed, going to throw it middle, and it is caught. Nice catch, first of the game for A.J. Richardson, first down. That's a really nice pitch and catch, and you're going to see actually a situation here where Cedric's to the bottom of the field. And this is what's being talked about on the sideline. This is a single high safety in the middle. You should look at him, keep him there. Throw it, throw it, throw it. I mean, 170 yards and three touchdowns against these guys last year. He wants the ball in his hands. They could not stop him. They could not stop him. New Mexico has kept him very quiet outside of one play. Handoff, right side, nowhere to go. In fact, backwards. Jermaine Conyers, the junior from the state of Georgia, stuffs Madison. I can add that now. That's two more carries, so that's now 11 traditional runs. Hat on a hat, and you've got 21 yards. Laura's telling us down on the sideline, it feels even windier now. Second and very long open, a penalty flag thrown. There's number one with the catch. Now let's see how frustrated he's going to be if this one comes back. There is a penalty flag on the play. They finally got him the ball. You know what good crews do, officiating crews? They convene and they talk. And we've seen this on a couple different occasions. Get to the right call. You confirm what everybody sees. And Mike DeVee is as good as it gets, the referee part of this Big 12 Mountain West crew. He wanted to tell me, too. I saw him in the hallway this morning. It's double X. Okay, he was willing to show me the shirt size was <laughs> double X. Personal foul, tripping, offense, number 87. Wow. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Replay second down. And you can see Cedric Wilson, the frustration starting to boil over. That called on the tight end, Alec Danins. And out here on the edge, and it's a little sprint pass. You're trying to move the pocket. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I think he just sees the feet go up in the air, right? Yeah, I mean, one, and that's the tell that those guys look for, is that initial contact, he misses, and Danon's trying to get his legs up in the air, and when those officials see that, they're triggered to make that call. That's second, and yeah, you read that right. 32 to go for the Broncos. Short middle, caught. Up to about the 23-yard line. You can't even say it's third and manageable. It's not. It's third and very long. And it might be third and very long for the first play of the fourth quarter. Well, the Broncos, we said this is a must win with the expectation level of this Boise State program. And this is anything but a lock for the Broncos here through three quarters of play at home against New Mexico. Just a one touchdown game even with the Lobos down to their third string quarterback hanging in against the big boys of Boise. All right welcome back live here quick explanation uh, we thought by all rights end of third quarter they bring us back though to say there's still two seconds on the clock and New Mexico, New Mexico called a timeout 
Yeah, they want, and you can see the wind that they, see. they want. Wow. Now, that's an unusual use of a timeout. They want Boise State, if it's going to be a punt situation, to have to punt into the wind. They burned a timeout trailing in the second half just because of the wind. Third and 23 for the Broncos. So you figure a punt is a pretty good possibility. Cozart keeping it. Cozart will come up well short of the first down. Now, he did get some field position across the 35. And the problem is there. Now you flip the field. So I, I don't know what was going on there. Especially on a gusty night and gusty winds, but I promise you this if you were with Bob Davey like we were last night and we told him it was going to be a one possession game heading into the fourth quarter, he'd take it tonight. Well, I know it was an unusual way for the third quarter to come to an end, but here we go. Quarter number four, Boise State really feeling like they have to have this one. They got big hopes, championship dreams in 2017. And they are struggling tonight at home against a very willing New Mexico team. Fourth and 11, first play of the fourth quarter is going to be a Broncos punt. And with the wind behind, a booming punt and no fair catch made. I'm not sure why there wasn't a fair catch. That's going to work out so well for Boise State. Wow. What was New Mexico doing in that last sequence? I don't get it. I do not get it. They call a timeout. You're down in the second half, burn a timeout which guarantees that Boise State is going to punt with the wind. Yeah. Then your return man had a clear chance to make a fair catch and cost the team 15 yards of field position. Now you're pinned at about the one. It is the situational football in that, uh, uh, that other phase, that special teams phase that New Mexico knew they had to win coming in this building tonight. And in a one possession game, you have to protect those timeouts at all costs. You yeah. saw it at the end of the first half. Yeah. Got to. And with their style of offense, to boot. Best momentum play for Boise State, a punt. 63 yards. Third string quarterback from the end zone. Gerhardt, handoff. Got to make sure you get out, barely. Owens. Entire football, you remember, has to get outside at that goal line. You can see the initial penetration there from Boise State. It does just barely. You're playing with fire if you're going to bounce that football outside with the kind of team speed that Boise has a linebacker in safety. Now this could be the game right here. Again, just barely out of the end zone, maybe to gain a yard. McCorley, third down. What a great shot, and you can see that surge, that initial penetration, and a Boise defense that has been on the field an awful lot tonight. 28 minutes of this game, yet lots of rotation, fresh bodies in there, and winning the tug of war. You have the guts to do anything else from this part of the field? If you're New Mexico, we'll see. Gerhardt play fake. He is going to throw. He's got a man, and it is incomplete. There was contact, but no flag thrown. And the New Mexico sideline cannot believe it. Well, you wanted guts, and you asked, and from the very onset of this game, Bob Davey has been the aggressor. He's not coming in here to just keep it close to the best, and you're going to see a double move here, and Gerhardt has him. I mean, that ball has just got to get thrown out in front of Q Drennan. You have what you want right there. But a gusty wind, a third-string quarterback can't quite get what he wants on the football. Now, Borges has to punt into the wind from the end zone with no room, and he gets it off. This one is returnable. Williams trying to change directions, coming back left. Williams with a blocker out in front to the 30, to the 25, inside the 20. And all the special teams maneuvering has given the Broncos a great chance. It's very remarkable, isn't it? team that has won so many games that has dominated in many ways for a decade plus and it's this phase that's the difference.
It's this phase. It's that special teams phase that the punt to the one yard line that their gunners don't allow to go over their head and a, and a punt returner that must salvage those 10 yards of real estate and then you compound it and you come right back doing what Avery Williams does best getting north and south and setting up his offense special teams turnover for Boise State last week was a key play when they blew their huge lead trying to make special teams a difference maker in the opposite way here tonight Wilson out on the outside handoff gain of three yards on first down from Ryan Wolpin yeah added to the list I mean, these first down runs are going to be studied closely. Disadvantage of playing on a short week on a Thursday, not a lot of time to put everything in. I mean, Avery doing his part, but he's looking like the rest of his defensive buddies at first down execution. It's just not efficient or effective. I mean, you know the Broncos are thinking, we got to punch this into the end zone. And you've got your big playmaker to the top. And off again, straight ahead. Wolfen bouncing off tacklers to the five. It'll be first and goal. That might be the best run of the night from a Broncos running back. First and goal, Boise State. Now in that red zone spot where we may see a little something different. In fact, it is the tight end, Jake Rowe, who is set up to take the snap. You don't see a lot of Wildcat to the tight end. Row, stutter step, move, touchdown. Had a sense this was coming. It was one thing on a short week in their game plan. Have to find ways to help your offensive line. If you just can't do it and mash people conventionally, then get to an opportunity where you outnumber that line of scrimmage. Rowe had the touchdown catch in the beginning. And an awfully big one here in the fourth quarter on the ground. Extra point up and good. And what a sequence for Boise State. The great punt from Velasquez. The bad field position for the Lobos. Then the punt return from the freshman Avery Williams who has become a dynamo on special teams that gave the Broncos field position and then it was the tight end out of the Wildcat touchdown Boise State 21 7. Power requires you can play power football you have got to wash that strong side down and for one of the first times tonight the big kids they've been picked on an awful lot well they responded in a big way. They did touch back on the kickoff. Still got time though. There's a lot of time left in this game. Different look out of the backfield. They're going to pitch it back to Gerhardt, who will be hit as he throws the balls up in the air, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Leighton Vander Esch. The hit. The ball up for grabs. And the turnover. Funky formation, you're right. Sleeve flicker, you're trying to confuse Boise. They're not. The senior Perez has the contact on the quarterback. And eventually, just the inexperience is going to show. I mean, there is just no way a third stringer who's just not gotten much of this work, if any at all, is going to make all the right decisions in the most critical moments. Perez with the blast, and who else? Van Der Esch. Been all over the field. The former walk on the former eight man football player. And Madison will get the ball straight ahead. Under six minutes to play. Well, it's still too early to start flipping ahead to next week and the rest of the season for Boise State. They got to finish this one out. We know what happened up in Pullman on Saturday. But the Broncos, even if they do finish this one out, second half, maybe some progress on the ground overall. It is still not the explosive, trick play oriented, fun to watch Boise offense we're used to seeing. We don't know whether Brett Rippon's going to be available next week or not. All indications certainly pointed that way is the protocol and the concussion testing and everything. He was not going to play this week. But I think he would be back against Virginia again. It's it's hard to play on a Thursday.
but you do get the benefit now of a weekend, some extra rest, extra opportunity to prepare for Virginia. But I would hope that Boise fan that was maybe intrigued before this game saying, wow, yeah, maybe we'll get a, a, a dual threat nature to our offense and, and maybe we'll be able to expand it. I, I hope that these 60 minutes have shown you what Brett Rippon has mean, meant to your program. I, I would think the point has been made for a lot of the Boise State fans who have been complaining. Up the middle, straight ahead running, close. I think he got the first down. He did. And it's not my job to preach to a Boise State fan base, but I could even expand that to a little bigger picture and say, be careful. Be careful just to expect 10, 11, 12 wins a year. It just doesn't happen. This Mountain West has gotten better. The coaches have gotten better. The facilities around you have gotten better. People have gotten better, and this is a young team. Everybody will be back defensively next year, including that guy. DeAndre Pierce and Vander Esch. Every, they've got two seniors in their entire two deep defensively. An O-line that had to replace basically everybody. They need a little more explosiveness. They need to find another explosive option outside of Cedric Wilson. But this team should get through their inexperience better over the course of the season. And I, I just to follow up on the point you're making about Van Der Esch and that Boise State defense, because there were a lot of questions how young they were, how many new starters on that side of the ball. I think those questions have been answered. This defense, yep. maybe, this year right here, right now, is playing at a very high level. Oh, they're going to keep them in every game. And last week against Wazoo, that game's 31-10. to 10. And if they don't have the special teams gaffe and then the giveaway and the pick six, yeah, they shut down Luke Falk. And knocked him out of that game. They're going to, their defense is going to keep them in every game this year. It was 17 points allowed to the Washington State offense pre overtime. That's it. Cozart will throw it forward and row toward the end zone. Leaps in. Touchdown. Well, Cozart stayed behind the line of scrimmage and flipped it to his tight end. Jake Rowe gets in the end zone for the third time. Two catches and a run. Have yourself a night, Mr. Rowe. I don't know if he's quite the explosive answer opposite of Seth Wilson. But he certainly is productive and pretty good awareness here from Cozart. Yeah, he's behind the line. Any part has to be behind the line. He's clearly behind the line. Rowe keeps himself available. And it's not to say that Kozar won't have a role and play maybe a very viable function within this offense this season. Bob Davey gave it his best shot. His guys fought, they competed their tails off. But ultimately, I think some of the experience, the two seniors there delivering and getting it done for a Boise team that is finally finding a way to finish. I think the folks here in Boise have taken a deep breath. Three touchdown lead with 3.11 to go. It has been tense in here all game long, but Boise State seems to have put this one away. Could have had a little fun. Three touchdowns for Rowe tonight. Cozart, really efficient evening when it's all said and done. Colton Gerhardt, one of the options still, pitches it. Chestnut along the sideline. Conventional means with the first one, just a little corner round and play action. You can see the eyes and the defenders for one of the rare occasions slipping there with New Mexico. Good push on the power run, the wildcat formation there for Rowe. In the heady play, and he played over 40 games, Don in his uniform. You have an awareness. You don't panic, you don't flinch. Rowe could see his buddy in a little bit of need of help. And a career best three touchdowns tonight. Almost matched the career total. He's played a lot of good football last year, was not healthy. Now he's healthy and he's a weapon again. Pass complete out to the 44 yard line for a New Mexico first down. Chris Davis with the catch. 2.32 to go. Well, if the locals made a little jingle about the O line this week and talking about some of their struggles, I don't think that was necessarily answered today. But I do also think, David, that Coach Harson played this game in a manner that he was going to be conservative. Right? Maybe it's not like the old Boise where they just stepped on the gas and it's a wrinkle here and it's a wrinkle there, but felt like his team was better. Starting quarterback for the other side gets knocked out of the game. Their backup is not traveled. You're down to a third stringer. There was no way he was going to give New Mexico anything and instead was really going to believe that his guys would wear them down and they would they would make the mistakes on the other side. And ultimately, that's what happened with New Mexico in the third quarter. It was special teams the turnover. Just too much inexperience on that side. Too many mistakes to come into this place 
and knock Boise State out. But I do think you put your finger on something. The anxiety around this town, around this state, around this program. There is a lot of anxiety. And I don't think tonight is going to make that all disappear. Part of that has to do with the history. Gerhardt taking off with a lot of room in front. They go out of bounds inside the 40. This is a Boise State program that's defined by the hook and ladder, the Statue of Liberty, the flea flickers, the trick plays, the huge offense, the excitement. And this Broncos team just doesn't have a lot of that element. Well, it's defined by Chris Peterson as well. You see the Fiesta Bowl going 92 and 12, losing three games over a span of five years. Think about that. Three and two undefeated seasons, three one-loss seasons. I mean, the bar is set so unbelievably and incredibly high for Coach Harson to follow. Good team, talented team, but a different team, that's for sure. Nice pass, good catch by Delane Hart Johnson. He's back healthy after a horrible car accident. Mexico, for a team that runs a triple option, they have some talent. They, they have do. some pretty good wide receivers. They do. Bob Davey can take some positives from this game. Final score may not reflect that. I think there was some good stuff. They got to worry about getting their quarterback back. Both of them. Toward the end zone. Nice pass and incomplete with a penalty flag thrown. That one was on the money intended for Jay Griffin. But the flag thrown, that's going to be pass interference. Yeah, this is not your New Mexico teams. I mean, if you just have not watched what Bob Davey has done here and what he has built in back-to-back -back bowl wins, I mean, those teams that preceded Bob Davey, if they were on their third string quarterback, this game is 56 to 7 tonight. Yeah. I think you're right about that. Pass interference, defense, number 37, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. And remember, there's no face guarding in college football, but you can't impede the receiver the opportunity to go back and make the catch on the football. That's the right call. Now, look, does it matter for the outcome? No, there are some people who are still tuning in with uh, some interest in this game. 21-point margin. Well, I was wondering when you mentioned that. <laughs> well, New Mexico on the move, trying to change the outcome for some. Gerhardt toward the end zone. Hold your breath. Touchdown! Touchdown, New Mexico. That's a great call, Brent. Uh, excuse, I'm, excuse me, Dave. There's a fine tradition to uphold, Brock. Did he ever work Thursday nights? I didn't see him on that <laughs> graphic to begin with. Well, <laughs> well, we're just channeling our friend who we miss. Uh, that, that is a big one for a few folks. That's Ume nice with the catch. It was a great play. Good pass, good catch. And the extra point can't take this for granted. Sanders up and good. So we will step aside. Final minute plus here from Boise when we come back after this. Uh, Colton Gerhard, who is the third string quarterback, second stringer to Iodi, the redshirt freshman, not available to play because of a concussion. Starter Lamar Jordan knocked out on a targeting penalty, and we assume a concussion. He has not played in the second half. Colton Gerhard has done you, a pretty man. good job. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. I mean, you. You transfer from Arizona State, you don't know what your opportunities are going to be. Tough kid. Onside kick coming here, so the Lobos, not much of a shot to win this game, but they're going to try. Now Onside kick recovered by Boise State. Cedric Wilson, well, we didn't have the impact in the pass game, but makes the recovery on the onside kick yeah, to he, basically he, put the game uh, away. He will this season. He will. I don't think there's any doubt. And if Hars Brian Hartson's asked about it after the game and maybe some of the conservative nature and the play calling, then we didn't see a lot of tempo. We saw a quarterback power run. That was just about it. You know, some of the outside stretch zone, maybe some things that we we thought we would see. I think Coach Harson, after giving the game away in some estimation last weekend, said we are not going to do that in our building. There's a reason that we have won 17, now 18 of these conference openers, because when you're the better team, you wait out an opponent, especially one that got beat up at the quarterback position as New Mexico did. To take that final knee and say, yeah, I got myself a win tonight. More than likely hand it back over to Brett and be more than available over the course of a very long season. Yeah, his head coach is happy, Brian Harson. He and the Broncos get a win. Two guys who respect one another. 
New Mexico fought hard, but ultimately they come up a couple of touchdowns short here on the blue turf of Boise. Our final score, 28-14. Boise State wins. Thanks for being with us on Thursday night. That's yeah, pretty fun. Good luck next week, Julian Booger. <laughs> Tough act to follow for Brock Hewitt, for Laura Rutledge, Dave Fleming saying so long from Boise Sports Center. Coming up in 15 seconds.